Hello, welcome back to Roll for Damage. Today, on episode 14, we are building slide on doors for our hex grid walls. So, I just went ahead and I cut out a piece of my uh, EVA foam. My walls are one and a half inch tall and I just put a really quick base on it. And I strictly built this uh, for the purposes of when I build this wall, I could apply pressure to the walls while they're hot gluing and it wouldn't bend or uh, affect the, the hot glue past the point that uh, it would put the wall or the door out of whack with the wall. So basically I'm just using that little piece for building purposes and I do recommend doing that. Alright, so our doors are going to be one inch, uh, one and three sixteenths of an inch with an opening. So what we're, we're going to do is we cut that uh, cardstock out on a two inch grid. So it's two inches by two inches. Uh, and that half inch overhang is going to be our EVA foam that sits on top of the wall. And that's going to bring our door up to a two inch height. So what you see me doing there is cutting out a little piece of EVA foam, uh, a half inch to be exact. That way when it sits on top of this one and a half inch wall, it'll bring that total height to two inches. So now I'm going to take our two inch wide cardstock and cut that into two individual pieces of two by two inch. Okay, so now that we have those cut out, the next step is we are going to trim our EVA uh, top rest to two inches and I had forgot to do that earlier uh, so that's why you see me doing that now and once those exactly uh, measure up with our cardstock we're going to hot glue it in place it doesn't need a lot of hot glue um, just enough to hold it Okay, this is going to act as kind of like a billboard where we can apply all our other uh, framework to it. And what you see me doing here is I have two popsicle sticks. And I'm going to cut those into two inch segments as well. So you'll get four two inch segments out of two popsicle sticks. And once we uh, cut these, these four pieces out and I uh, put them on either side of our cardstock, the space that's left between is going to leave us one and three sixteenths of an inch, and that is that is the hex grid size that I'm using for my for my tiles. So let's go ahead and glue those on. And I'm using these popsicle up, uh, sorry, popsicle sticks as basically a skeleton. Um, that way, my doors remain uh, somewhat firm and rigid. If you would just use the cardboard and foam, it, it, it would be easily uh, torn if you're not careful. Uh, the only thing that was really holding that together is just hot glue. Um, and you know, hot glue with a foam and cardboard bond is not concrete by any means. So I just added for extra durability. Okay, I'm gonna cut out a two inch segment uh, twice as well. And I'm going to glue both of those, uh, one after the other, atop the actual door. This is just going to give me a little extra height and a little bo bit more uh, reinforcement for my door. Okay, there's, I'm making sure I'm, I'm measuring. Both my doors uh, openings are one and three sixteenths. This is a closed door and it will not uh, be able to be open. So that's not too entirely important. However, just for aesthetics and to make sure uh, when I do build my opening doors that they're all identical, uh, I wanted to make sure it was exact. All right, so I took some uh, Dollar Tree foam board and I made sure to cut out a column that was one and three sixteenths inch wide. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just eyeball 
where not the top of the two popsicle sticks we drew um i mean we glued to the top of the door frame we want to get to the actual uh, base of where that cardstock starts so technically that uh dollar tree foam board should only be two inches tall now i'm just uh rubbing it against some sandpaper just to get off all the burrs and and make sure i have a nice straight clean cut i'm gonna hot glue that in place now the door that i'm building you here is basically a two-faced or two-sided door um, so it's gonna be a little bulkier than the most than most of my doors uh, however uh, the way it's designed to be built it's two different doors on either side so you don't have to build separate doors for a different kind of dungeon you just have to flip your door around um, so what I'm doing now is originally I was gonna make this framework uh, stone and if you wanted to make it more stone-like, uh, I, I cut out strips of more EVA foam, and then I'm cutting that back texture off of it. It's basically like 1 16th of an inch. I'm just skimming that back, just, just so it brings a little bit closer to my actual popsicle sticks and it doesn't stick out as far. Um, if you wanted the stone texture, all you would have to do is take those scissors and just kind of chop into it at angular uh, slices and it would give it that rigid uh, stone look. However, I decided that I wanted it to look like worn uh, wood, like you ever see those trees that fall down and, and they're stripped of bark and they just look just sanded and worn. Well, that's the appearance that I wanted for my door frame. Um, so I didn't do those angular cuts. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gluing that top piece on. And I actually took and beveled that corner off just so it would sit uh, more flush against those popsicle sticks. And then we're gonna hot glue that on there as well. I'm gonna do the same thing to the back. Uh, I just edited out of the actual tutorial just because it was redundant and uh, you didn't need to see me doing uh, the actual door work all over again. Uh, you do see me doing the framework um, because I, I'm going to go back and I'm going to hot glue everything to, uh, to kind of fuse it all together so it just looks like one unit rather than uh, individual pieces uh, slung together. Um, however, uh, you, you're not going to see me put this foam board on the other side. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, carving into the foam board uh, my clean side and I'm drawing hinges on it and I have three of the old medieval style hinges and I'm basically just carving that into the foam board by pressing gently and then I'm going to go back after that and draw lines down uh, to make it look like four indiv individual boards that uh, is made, this door is made up of. Okay, so I'm actually going to do the same thing to the back. However, I, I cut that out. Um, the only difference is I I coated the good side with the glue, with PV, uh, PVA or Elmer's glue. Um, that way it protects it from my spray paint. The back side, I lightly just brushed with black paint and allowed that spray paint to get at certain spots so it would kind of eat that door and make it uh, look rotten. So there's my clean side. Um, it's on my one and a half inch wall and I don't know if you could tell, but see how that's kind of rotten and, and looks like it was dilapidated and just slowly being you know torn apart basically uh, so these walls can stand by themselves I'm sorry these doors are thick enough to stand by themselves uh, if that's what you wanted and just build a, have like a, a field tile there and you wouldn't have to have that wall to slide on it it would still work however I I like the walls um, so it's it's actually you know it's of course designed to sit on that wall uh, this is a different door that I made. This is my boss door. 
Uh, I didn't enter this in the tutorial either just because it was a little more in depth and I didn't want to drag this video out that long. If y'all want an editorial or a tutorial on how to build this door, I can do that. It's, it's really simple though. It followed the exact same basics uh, minus the cardstock. I just took popsicle sticks and glued them directly onto the EVA foam and not to cardstock. And then I took uh, matchsticks and I glued those one at a time from the top of that EVA foam to an additional uh, popsicle stick at the bottom. And then those two long slats that are going across the door, that's actual coffee stirrers. Um, so there was just, you know, an alternative door. Uh, and however, like I said, if y'all really want to see that video, I can, uh, I can do one on that door as well. Alright, so I'm going to paint these, and then I'll be back. Alright, so after it's painted and I put my three layers of brown paint on, um, what you see me doing with the Sharpie is I'm going over only the black hinges. And that's because a Sharpie leaves back kind of like a sheen when you, when you use it. So it gave it that metal effect um, without me having to paint over it. And uh, I just added that just, just to give it that little shine. All right, there's my half inch wall. And here's my door and my rotten door. Whatever side you wanted to use in whatever current room they're in. And it just slides on. And there will be like the slightest little gap at the bottom and that's only for texturing purposes if you had a textured wall or a textured floor um, that way it would stay up just a hair above the actual floor so there you go it's the door sits perfectly between uh, each hexagon tile which of course again is one and three sixteenths on my version Here's the boss door. This one's a little bit harder to slide on because it's more rigid and you actually just have to kind of barely spread those uh, popsicle sticks apart as you slide it on. And then it slides easy, um, but it, you know, it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't accept that wall as easy as the uh, double-sided door. So thank you all for watching. I hope this helped you. Uh, please give me any feedback to let me know. If you want to see this other door made or what you think about these doors or what do you think I could improve on. Thanks again for watching.